Welcome to BitX. What we see in front of us is a BitX Gamma. And when you first get your device, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna set it up in your case, and you're gonna plug in power. And when you do, you're gonna see a screen that looks just like this. It's saying SSID is your SSID, no AP found, configuration SSID is BitX underscore CDC9. Now these devices are designed to run on 2.4 gigahertz wireless. They will not run on 5 gigahertz wireless, so you need to make sure your wireless network is set up for 2.4 gigahertz. So we see that BitX CDC9. We're going to come over to our computer. I got a Windows based computer here. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go to my wireless network and I'm going to look for that BitX CDC9. There's available wireless networks. The computer's just looking around, trying to see what's out there, what it can connect to, and it shows up. If it doesn't show up right away, give it a minute or two and click this bottom right hand corner for the refresh network list and it'll keep looking. So I connect to it. It's going to open up the web page. Now this is an internally connected between this computer and that device only. It's not out to the internet. Okay. So we're going to come in here we're going to go to network. We're going to put in our wireless network name. So I'll plug mine in here. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna come over here to settings and we're gonna see a couple different things. We're gonna see a stratum host. This is a public pool.io in this case. It's just an, a solo pool, a stratum port. We're gonna see stratum user. Now this is really important. Stratum user starts with your Bitcoin wallet address, period, and a worker name. Now the period and worker name are completely optional. They can be very beneficial if you're looking up statistics, any information that's on the pool. Stuff like that, it can tend to help, help you see trends over time. Our stratum password, and then we see a fallback. And the fallback is if this primary were to go down, the device will automatically fail over to a fallback. Again, fallback stratum users are Bitcoin wallet address, case sensitive, and our period and worker name. We see frequency and voltages are set at their defaults. We see these checked. Don't have to worry about any of that. We've got our address name in here. And I'm gonna click save, and then I'm gonna click restart. Now when I do that, our BitX device is gonna reboot. It's gonna see our wireless network, the information that we put in there. It's gonna flash our BitX flash screen, and it's gonna load straight in and give us an IP address of 212, 192.168.1.212. Now that's gonna be unique to your internal network. It could be start with the 10, it could start with a 192, doesn't matter but you need to know what that is. So this is loading, it's hashing already. We see temperature, we see some different stats on here. So 192.168.1.212. I'm gonna go back to my computer. I'm gonna change my back over to my primary wireless network. I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna put that address in 192.168.1.212. And now I'm going to load into the dashboard, and this is connected through my network. And what I see here is I see the hash rate, current hash rate. This is just a snapshot in time. I see some graphs here. The white line is our temperature trend. The red, solid red, is going to be the current hash rate mapped over time. We see our efficiency, the number of shares that we have solved or, or resolved and were accepted by the pool and our best difficulty that we've seen so far. Now you're gonna expect to see some rejected shares on this, but over time we should see a very, very low sub 1%. You know, I, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.01, that's great. That's what we wanna see. We will get rejected shares, so it will never be 100% perfect, but it'll be very low. So we see our trend, we see our device is ramping up, and coming down, this is totally normal. It's very normal to see our device over time have up and down trends in our hash rate, what we call our hash rate. Then the bottom we see our power, we see our input voltage or ASIC frequency and our measured ASIC voltage. We see some pool information, uptime, ASIC temperature, voltage regulator temperature, and fan speed. Now, if I navigate on the spit ax away from the dashboard and I go back, we see we've lost this 
all this trend information. So the BitX device and the XOS does not store this information uh, on the device. Unlike some other devices, BitX does not do that. So if you leave the screen open on your computer uh, and your computer doesn't go to sleep, it doesn't load a screensaver, it will, it will keep this information in the web page. And you'll see over time, as again, we see up and down movements of, of the hash rate, what we consider the hash rate. Totally normal. Now, let's talk about some issues you may have. Let's say we put in our network information and we're not getting an IP address. Then we need to make sure that we're on a 2.4 gigahertz network. Okay, you need to make sure of that. And again, on your primary network, if you're broadcasting a guest network, I would advise you don't you don't connect this device to any guest network connected to your primary that your main computers are connected to. It, it's very can be very difficult, and if, unless you're pretty tech savvy, it can be difficult to connect a computer that's on a primary network to a device that's on a guest network, and you're going to have nothing but challenges trying to connect and speak to that device directly. These are not cloud-based devices. This is strictly on your home network. It reaches out to the pool, gets information, submits information, and that's it. So unlike a lot of IoT devices out there, like your thermostats and things like that, where they're connected to a cloud, that is not how this device works, okay? Now, let's talk about some of those other issues we may have. So we don't see an IP address, for example, and we're not loading it in. We, we went in there, we went to the configuration page, we put all our information in. We're not getting an IP address, again, Double check you're on 2.4 gigahertz. Now let's say that we do have an IP address. We load in, but our hash rate up here is a zero and it doesn't seem to be hashing and these red lines flat and the white lines flat and we don't know what's going on. Why would that be? The first thing I would look at to make sure we have a measured ASIC voltage here. This tells me that the ASIC itself is getting the voltage that it should be getting. If we see a voltage here and we still don't have a hash rate, we need to, we, we're not, processing shares as we should be. And there's two real primary reasons why that can occur. First is our Bitcoin wallet address is incorrect. If we have that incorrect, it can't submit shares, it can't process those shares, and it will show no hash rate. So first things first is always validate that. Remember, it's case sensitive, make sure that that is correct. The second thing, especially people who use ASUS routers, is make sure that your AI protect is turned off because that will prevent the communications back and forth to the pool. So those are the two most common things that we see when people reach out to us, our customer service and say, hey, I've got this thing plugged in, I see voltage, but I'm not getting a hash rate, I don't know what's going on. And that's what the primary causes are. So AI protect for ASUS routers or, or any kind of blocking that could be done on your, on your router side. And Bitcoin wallet address is inaccurate, it's incorrect. Again, the dot, and the remaining information that's after that, like we see here, this period, and then this data back here, this is our worker name. Completely optional, doesn't have to be there. Won't impact. But that primary Bitcoin wallet address, your Bitcoin wallet address must be accurate. All right, appreciate everybody's business. Appreciate you tuning in. Got any questions? Leave a comment down below and we'll see if we can't answer them for you. Thanks.